Good morning, everyone. Uh, so, as you guys can tell, I'm back at Crown Auto. I don't know if you guys um, remember, but it, like two videos ago, I mentioned I had a leak in the tire, in a tire, and I went to, I dropped it off here to get it diagnosed. So it turned out it was a nail in the tire. The only thing is the nail was too close to the sidewall, so they ended up recommending that I replace the tire, which is really tragic because I had to spend like two hundred something dollars to get that tire, and now I'm gonna you know pay them to put it on pretty much because i don't have the tools to do that myself at home but this video is going to be more like a maintenance video today because uh, there's a few maintenance i need to catch up on on the rx8 including the oil change i need to go to uh, there's advanced auto by my job so i might just go in there and just like you know see what they have if not i'll buy it on amazon because i am looking for a specific type of oil because i want to try a new thing today but uh, I'll tell you guys more about that later, but I'm at Crown Auto right now. You can see they got some really nice cars out here. They got an S2000, they got like a Bentley over there, BMWs, you know, a race car back over there, 3000 GT Porsche and everything. Oh, look at that. It's like a little K truck. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of cool cars over here, but it is raining again, which sucked because I wanted to do the oil change today, but I don't think I'm gonna end up doing that if it's gonna be raining, but I'm gonna look for the receipt for something and for a little bit and then i'm gonna head in and see what happens hopefully they don't send me home i don't imagine this being a job that takes too long but um and i, I mean i don't live too far away from here but i'd rather just wait in the waiting room if it's not gonna take too long so i don't have to walk home in the rain and come back you know but yeah i'll see you guys inside while i'm here i just want to take a quick look what is this oh they got like a gt3 over there damn that's really cool i don't know what this car is oh it's another porsche could have just looked that simple. All the wheels. Alright, let's talk to the guy inside. No way, no way you can't see it. You just, you just need to have a B-Wing on both sides and back. That's how you know they're legit. Okay, cool. I just dropped off the car, handed over the keys. They got like all these racing seats here. And uh, you know, sitting one of them for an hour. Wow, this is pretty tight. Snugs too. Said it's gonna take around an hour, so we'll wait here for a little bit and pick up the car as well. Well, uh, started picking up the rain, so kind of sucks. But I just picked, I just got the car back home. Uh, I, I recorded some stuff in there. I don't know if I'll end up being. But, being able to use it because they were playing music and I don't want to get like a copyright strike. That's like the last thing I want on this channel. No copyrights, you know, fingers crossed. But uh, I was gonna do an oil change today, but I wasn't expecting the rain to be like this. I mean, I knew it was gonna be raining. I was hoping, I guess I was hoping for it to be like a drizzle and not like a hard rain. But I mean, it is what it is now. I guess I can't do it. And it's honestly one of the more annoying things about like having a car, I know, in New York City at least, if you don't have a driveway or a garage to do stuff in, like you're just, all the times I've had to do like oil changes or work on anything, even in my Miata, I had to do like a, a valve cover gasket, where really, like rebuild the transmission in the middle of the street. And it's just not fun, because you're exposed to the elements. So, you know, if it's raining, oh, you can't do it today. And then, oh, the, the, the entire week's weather is pretty bad, so can't do anything this week. And that's honestly one thing that really sucks. I think there might be like one day of this week where it might be like sunny in the morning, so I'll try to get it done then. But yeah, I still have to go buy the oil as well. I'm trying a new oil. I did see some of the stuff at Crown Auto, but they were charging like 20. I saw like the Idemitsu regular oil, like 10W30 at Crown Auto, but they were charging like 25 bucks for it. So uh, that that's really expensive, I think. Cause if I was to buy like four quarts, that's pretty much almost a, as nearly a hundred dollars. Well, it would be a hundred dollars, right? Yeah, it would be a hundred dollars. So that's, that's a lot for oil change. And then they do sell it cheaper online, but the shipping online is just crazy. But I'm trying a new oil this time anyways. But yeah, <clears throat> rain sucks. No driveway garage sucks. I, it's, I'm just so jealous every time I watch YouTube and I see all these other car guys just like, oh, I'm gonna, you know, do this in my garage today, do this in my driveway today. I'm like, man, I wish I had one. So hopefully I get to, I can move out to a place with a driveway and, or garage, ideally, but I don't think I can afford it. But hopefully I can move out to a spot with like a designated parking area at least so I could do some of my own work on the car. But yeah, I'll 
Gotta get get to work soon, but I'll see you guys in a bit when I buy the oil. After you, sir. Thank you. We'll see. Every time I come into like any auto parts store, right? I, I just I just think of like, oh, maybe I need this and this, that, and that. Yeah, and you end up spending still? a lot more money than. Huh? Can you get I do, but do you... trying a new oil this time. Oh yes, this is the stuff. But not the right weight. You sold me five W thirty? No. No. Ten W thirty for the winter. I could run this, but this is it's twenty W fifty. I could run that in the summer. Did I have to need this but ten W thirty. Maybe I just gotta buy it off Amazon. Right there? No. Oh, that's you need Valvoline VR one is what I'm trying to run. Probably just gonna have to go on Amazon for this because they have it for like ten bucks on Amazon. Anything better? What? Damn! Why they gotta? They gotta put that there. You separate it. And what's what? What makes the difference between a high mileage wiper from a standard one? Oh, for a worn wiper arms. I don't know. It's honestly, prime content right here. Prime YouTube. As long as we find whatever blades we need, but... We'll get that for your 350. Hell no. No, we're keeping the cap, we're keeping the mufflers, we're keeping the exhaust, we're keeping the stock. Pulling into the gas station again, because you know, that's what you do when... Because that's what you do when you drive RX-8. Apparently, you just get gas all the time. I swear, this is like my, this is like my third, third time at a gas station in the past, what, week? Yeah, this is my third time in a gas station for this week. Not this week, but in the past week. It's my third time at a gas station. It's getting kind of crazy, but you know, it is what it is. Can't complain too much about it. Still need to fix this, but got my pre-mix here. Rotary stuff. Jeez, 445 for premium. It's kind of expensive, but I know it's a lot ex more expensive in other parts of the country, so I can't complain too much. But I'm not used to it, you know? Give me time. I mean, don't give me time. I don't want to get used to it in higher prices, but it's starting to drop a little bit, so thank God. I think it was at like five something, almost six dollars, like just a few months ago. So can't complain too much now that it's 445. Well, I'll have you guys here. Just want to give a quick shout out for the guys at Renewable Lubricants for sending me some of their premix to try. Um, I've been using Edomitsu for the longest time, and you know that is pretty much the go-to brand if you're looking for a rotary premix. But um, came across these guys on Instagram. They sent me a message. It was like, hey, do you want to try out some of this stuff? And I was like, yeah, I'll try it. Um, it's not a pay paid product placement or a sponsorship or anything like that. But I just want to give say thanks for you know sending me some of the stuff to try. They say it's supposed to burn a lot cleaner than regular. Um, traditional premix is supposed to burn a lot cleaner and it's supposed to be a better lubricant so you don't have to use as much per gallon and you could use it with any type of fuel e85 and everything like that so you know trying it out right now I'll let you guys know what i feel and like you know if i notice any difference between driving it's supposed to smell less as well so i'll let you guys know about that but yeah just want to give them a quick shout out again this is not a paid product placement or sponsorship so if i don't like it i'll let you guys know So while I have the car jacked up, I just want to talk about something that I know I'm going to get asked out a lot. My cousin pulling in here in his Porsche, but I'm going to talk about why. I don't know if you guys will be able to hear me, so I'm going to just wait for him to park. I'm borrowing his driveway. You know, his car was supposed to be here. I'm just borrowing his driveway to do some work because, you know, I don't have a spot to do it. And I didn't want to do it in the middle of the street today, so here I am. All right, so uh, I'm just gonna be talking about something that I know I'm gonna get asked at a lot. So why am I running 
VR1 instead of regular, uh, synth no, not synthetic. Why am I not running like conventional oil, right? Because that's what a lot of rotary guys will tell you to do, or that's what Mazda recommended you to do to run um, conventional oil and not run a synthetic oil like this. I think I don't think this is actually a synthetic oil. I think the 20W51 is synthetic, but why am I not just running regular, you know, dinosaur fossil fuel? Why am I not just running conventional oil? Well, I actually did a lot of research on this, but prior to this, I have run just strictly, uh, the, the word is literally slipping, slipping out of my mind as I say, but prior to this oil change, I have been running just strictly conventional oil, like the regular stuff that you will find at gas stations and auto zones, advanced autos, just, um, I think the brand was Castrol. I've been running Castrol 10W40s in the summer, I mean, in the winters, and then I switch over to a higher weight 20W50 in the summers. I mean, yeah, it's summers. Um, I really don't recommend running the recommended oil, which is what I think 5W30. That That's, the oil is way too thin to provide any significant lubrication for your apex seal. So you should, even if you don't, if you, like you know, you haven't done any modification to your car, you should just switch your car up to a higher weight, like 10W40 just to be safe and you know oh there are like testing online where people compared lab results of like blackstone labs oil testing between the 5w dirty stuff and then going up to a higher weight and it does show significant like better lubrication and better health of the engine so even if you don't do anything like crazy like that you can run 10w dirty just to prevent you know keep your engine healthy but um Currently on my car, I have a sewn oil adapter, so it didn't, doesn't really matter what I put in the crankcase anyway, because it's not gonna be pulling oil from the crankcase and injecting it into the combustion chain, like into the area where you're lubricating the apex seals. So it didn't really matter in the first place if I was gonna run synthetic or not, but I wanted to try this stuff out because of course, I mean, everyone here is Rob Dom talking about it, right? But why am I running a race, race oil in a regular street car? Well, I did a little bit more research and I have seen a lot of people that run you know vr1 on street cars and it's fine it's not really a real race car where you have to change the oil every 500 miles because obviously i mean i don't think valvoline would sell something like that to the mass market but you could this is you still could follow regular oil changing schedules with this stuff like every 2000 3000 miles you'll be good and i have seen people do lab uh, blackstone lab results and i've seen like you know people run vr1 in rotaries and it was it shows significant like better lubrication and i mean i, I will try to link some of the stuff i found in the uh, comment section below so you guys could refer to it as well but i have the car jacked up right now i'm just gonna try to get this oil change done before it starts raining because it is supposed to start raining today but yeah let's let's go oil changes on the rx8 is relatively you know similar to all every other oil change you see the oil drain plug right there unbolt it i slide this under there grab my tools pretty much gonna loosen that up let the oil drain out and into this pan and we'll pretty much after that we'll change the oil filter up top but it's really hard recording down here with the actual camera and not a gopro so i was trying to do this I'll just put the camera on the floor. Oil filter, we're using the OEM Mazda filter. Just gotta get this one out of the way. It is a lot easier to get out than the one in the Miata because of the oil filter placement. But this is still a pretty, you know, still gotta reach in there awkwardly and try to get the try to get the oil filter out so i don't think i'm gonna be filming much part of this because it's just uh it's annoying to do so uh, i'll just probably record it and tell you guys about it after i get it out So nothing ever goes smoothly around here, right? So not only that, I end up cutting myself in the randomest places. I realized I didn't have like a new, I wanted to replace the oil drain bolt and I, cause I forgot to buy it pretty much. And when I took this one out, I noticed like, you know, it's, it's kind of dinged up and stuff. For a second, I thought I broke it off. That gave me a real scare, but I don't think I did. Fingers crossed, my, I mean, I'm pretty sure I didn't. So um, while I have the car jacked up over here, I'm just gonna have my cousin take me to AutoZone in this car so I could buy a new boat and I could just 
drop off the oil there as well. I'm just gonna grab a garbage bag, wrap this all up, and then we we'll put it in the back of this car. But yeah, um, it didn't go as smoothly as I wanted, but you know, it is what it is. But it shouldn't take too long aside from this. Take this there, drop it off, new boat, put the new one in, fill it up with oil, we should be good. Probably the most nerve-wracking part after changing the oil for me just like oh man I hope I didn't f anything up and now the car won't start So yeah, I got a one of truth Okay, okay, it starts it starts now I gotta You know make sure the car is not leaking oil So I'm gonna pull the car out of the driveway first have my cousin move his car and then we could pull this out make sure nothing is leaking and do a little test spin Make sure everything feels okay and that, sh that should be it. It took a lot longer than I was hoping for. It started at 2, it's almost 3 now. So this <laughs> this became a 3 hour oil change. And I ended up going to AutoZone midway to go buy a new oil drain plug. Turns out you know, the thing was too long, the stem was too long so it didn't even fit in the car. Pretty much wrong size. I have to end up using the old one anyway so didn't need to go AutoZone. But I guess I had to go and drop off the oil anyways. But anyways, that's enough. Rambling on, let's go test drive the car. All right, well, uh, I just came back from the test drive. I was originally gonna record it, but I <laughs> I ended up not doing so because I was sitting in traffic the whole time and that wasn't gonna be very fun to watch anyways. But I, let me see. Yeah, still no leaks or anything like that, which is good. Um, just gonna check the oil level one more time before heading back inside and conclude the oil change. There was one more thing I wanted to do today as part of this maintenance video, which was this thing. I wanted to fix my tail light today, but uh, if you guys can't already tell, there's like specks of water running all around the car, starting to drizzle. It's gonna rain today, and once it starts raining, I don't think it's gonna, according to the weather app, it's not gonna stop raining until like two days from now. So just gonna check the oil level, make sure that's still good, and there's, I mean, there's no leak, so it should still be good, but check the oil level and just head home for today. And but yeah, that, that's it for the, the little maintenance day. It's kind of, I don't know how this video is going to end out because I haven't edited it yet, but oh, hopefully it was still just like a fun little video. Just walking you guys through my maintenance. I do this every, what, 3,000 miles, the oil change. That was probably the most annoying part, but but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I, I do have a lot more videos planned for next week. I want to actually like you know take you guys on a driving like you know take you guys driving in the car because you know made videos about how much it costs to maintain it how how I felt driving the over the year like you know all the stuff that i learned all the extra stuff you got to do to maintain these cars it's all worth it because you got to drive it so can't wait to make videos of me actually just taking you guys out for a cruise or a tow gate run or something like that but yeah that's pretty much it for this video hopefully you guys enjoyed this little maintenance day if you guys have any questions just let me know in the comment section below and I'll see you guys in the next one.